Welcome to Crossing in the Woods. If you want our CH2 replay cast, it's going to be uploaded to ch2.org by Number, who requested some help with his own play. So we're going to keep following him mostly. Uh, he's going to be playing as Wehrmacht, and he's going to go for an MG immediately, and not for a Tier 1, which is interesting. We'll see how that plays out. Looks like he will go for a lot of MGs, which might work out, considering it's... Oh, okay. Uh, he's just going to build his infantry company close to the edge of the base, which is fine enough. Um, his own enemy is going to be Absolute Zero, with his uh, just Lead Speak name, which is uh, terrible for me, because I hate Lead Speak. Um, we're going to have a Special Rifle Command out of him, which is interesting considering it's against the Wehrmacht. So, uh, looks like he, he might be going for a Sniper and not a Scout Car, um, because, well, uh, for the Special Rifle Command, the Sniper is way better against the Wehrmacht than the Scout Car, in my opinion, because of the Panzerfausts. So, N Number is going to make good uses of us Tier 1, getting out some Grenadiers, which is good because he wants to some capping power in the early game and also something to help out his MG in case it gets flanked. It looks like it's going to be a fairly slow start, considering both players went for uh, t their tiers. We also have a second Counter Squad out of Absolute Zero, which is interesting considering he did for Tier 1, so I'm really not sure why he got, went for Tier 1 if then he built a Counter Squad. He could have waited a little bit of Vampire to get a Penal and used that as a little bit of an extra anti infantry in the early game. Now, something that Dubber might not know is that this Panzerfaust Bolt End doesn't really work, uh, <laughs> which is interesting as you can see. Well, actually, it seems, seems to actually work. Instead of 25, it's 23. But yeah, then again, um, every time you use a Panzerfaust, you save two munitions. Like, how many Panzerfausts are you going to use in a game? Ten? Ten at max. And then you're going to save ten munitions throughout the entire game. Nah, it's better usage of your bolt tanks to do something like Absolute Zero Dead, which is buff his own mainline infantry with some accuracy. So we have a Sniper being purchased from Number, and which is interesting because Absolute Zero seems to be cloning Rampart to purchase his own Sniper. So this might be pretty good for um, Absolute Zero because the Soviet Sniper does counter the Wehrmacht Sniper. It's about the only good thing the Soviet Sniper does. It's counter Wehrmacht Snipers. So we have some barbed wire being placed by Number, which is an excellent choice. You'd want to be denying as much cover to the enemy as possible. But it looks like the uh, Soviets are having a bit of an easier time getting map control on the right side anyway because of uh, this Conscript Squad and only one engineer being present from the Germans. But the Germans have firm control of the left side with this machine gun. Uh, these engineer combat engineers are in a bit of a pickle. Uh, we have a third conscript again. Very bad idea to get this tier one because it delays your capping and it it costs fuel. Uh, if you're gonna be spamming conscripts, if you're just if you're gonna be getting this, you might as well use the units that you get out of it. I guess he's waiting for um, he's just buying conscripts while he waits for um, you know an RV or full kind of unit like the sniper to know you know I'm gonna have to counter this with my own sniper, or uh, just if he had gone for a lot of, if Nubber had gone for a lot of MGs, maybe he would have gone with uh, a scout car. That kind of choice, I don't know. Uh, we have an excellent teller mine out of Nubber. Now, it's in a bit of a aggressive position because if um, Absolute Zero decides to, also he's going for a sniper now. So he just wanted to get a lot of infantry uh, to beef up his front line so that the sniper can be used in the back line fairly safely. Now, well, the Terra Mine is obviously a good idea, and getting it early is also good because just in case there's a G70 that comes up, it's going to be able to easily counter it. Um, getting it in such an aggressive spot uh, on the map is a bit of, bit of a bad idea because, well, these engineers might just upgrade with a Minesweeper, so yeah. Uh, the Sniper actually in a very precarious situation. It got three kills on this Conscript, but it advanced a little bit too far, far and ate some, ate some shots from them. So it looks like a medic bunker will be uh, pretty much what the doctor ordered for Nubber. Uh, he will definitely need to get one in his base. He's going for phase one, which is excellent because he will be able to get a scout card, which does completely counter uh, the Soviet tier one. It counters the sniper very hard and it counters the scout card, the Soviet scout card, very hard. So these Grandiers are attempting to repulse these uh, Conscripts and they will be easily able to do so thanks to the support of the Sniper. The sniper definitely dealing some heavy damage to the Soviet infantry. So right now the Germans have complete, complete control of the game because they have had some easy engagements against the Soviets. We have a Mortar being built. Now this is a mistake in my opinion. 
Uh, the only thing that, that the Soviets have that the mortar actually counters is a sniper. Uh, but at the same time, if he would have gone for... He's gone for phase one, so if he gets his combat engineers back into the base and builds a tier two, then he's going to be able to easily counter the snipers with a 2 2 scout cart fairly uh, effortlessly anyway. So that's definitely what I would be doing if I was him. Uh, looks like he's going to be using his engineers though to push up against the Soviet infantry. He's also keeping this one Grand Year spot a little bit too far away. Uh, the sniper is actually going to go for a counter snipe. Engineers being forced to retreat and a scout car with a flamethrower is being pushed in the left side. Now this is very dangerous because there might be a Grand Year ready with a fan Faust in ambush. But luckily for him it's not and he's going to be able to easily capture or rather decap the uh, fuel point. Now, it looks like the Germans also caught wind of the sniper, um, because it did fire once, so he does know that there's a sniper and he's also going for the counter snipe, uh, going for um, hold fire. So that's definitely a good play out of both players, want to be uh, as careful as possible with your sniper when there's enemy snipers around. Now, I'm not too good of a sniper player, we also have another Taylor Mine in a very aggressive position. This is pretty much in the middle of enemy territory, which is... Well, um, if a Minesweeper goes up from absolute zero, then that would be very, very bad for these Stellar Mines. But um, he also went for a Flamethrower on his own uh, only Engineer, so I doubt he will be able to um, get anything out of that. Conscripts are attempting to push up against the Machine Gun, but the Machine Gun will easily catch them out and suppress them. Mortar also in a bit of a trouble, troublesome spot uh, from the Scout Car, actually. Scout Car will be able to flame a little bit the mortar and the general support weapons, but uh, there was another construct spot pushing up from the center which was suppressed and repulsed by this Grandier. Uh, the Grandier will be easily able to hand the Faust this Scout Car, but it might not be able to save the MZ, which is in a bit of a pickle, and the Sniper goes down because it wasn't cloaked. It was pretty much revealed by the Scout Car, uh, which has a pretty good detection radius for snipers, and it was easily defeated. Um, I believe the detection radius for the scout car on cloaked snipers or cloaked units in general as this scout car is actually going to kill the conscript squad. No, not actually because of the these guys were very much too far away, but the engineer goes down as well. So that was actually a lot uh, of resources for the Soviets. That was pretty much 104, uh, rather 106, 70 manpower for the engineers. Yeah, 170 manpower, then 210 manpower for the scout car. No, 190. Wow, I don't know. I don't know my Soviet units at all anymore. Uh, 260, 360, uh, 15 fuel. So 360 manpower, 60 munitions, and 15 fuel down the drain over here for only 50 munitions. So that was an excellent trade for the Germans. As much as you'd say, oh well, you tell our mind the Scott car, blah 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 blah. It's not worth it. No, that was worth it. That was completely worth it. But at the same time, the Germans did lose the sniper in that engagement. Again, as I said, I think the scout car, both the German one and the Soviet one, have a 20 detection radius for cloaked units, which means uh, the radius from the scout car would be about this big to detect snipers, and they also have an accuracy bonus against snipers. So we have another Teller mine being placed by number. Now, what is good about these Teller mines is that, of course, more defense against any kind of German, uh, rather Soviet early vehicles, also these. Engineers should be really going over here and capturing. They should not be standing idle. I know you're microing your scout car, but you really should be paying attention to what your units are doing. And the left and the um, upper right side of your screen, you're gonna have your own units uh, with you know these counters up here. So what you want to be doing is keeping an eye out on them and keeping an eye on this clock icon. When there's a clock icon like this, uh, it means that your units are idle and they're not doing anything. And this is pretty much manpower you're wasting. So you should be putting these units to work. As you can see, he's finally noticing this and sending his own units to cap the right side, which is pretty much undefended. So that's good for the Germans, that now we're going to have a little bit of a resource advantage for them. We have a Ura from Conscript Squads. We're going to throw an anti-tank grenade and pretty much immobilize the scout car for a little while. Um, the only engineer squad is on the right side capping. And, well, okay, about the mines. Uh, they're a good idea from... Um, Number, but at the same time, as you can see now, the Soviets have caught wind of this and they've upgraded wisely a minesweeper on their next um, combat engineer squad that they rebuilt. So now these mines should be uh, slowed down. We have a pretty big push from two construct squads. 
going to be attempting to destroy the Scott car. Actually, this is a mistake from the Soviets. They should have been pushing up with this squad because this other squad doesn't have anti tank grenades ready to them. Uh, the rifle fire will be able to actually destroy the Scott car, which is very interesting. I wasn't expecting that at all. We have a machine gun set up to flank these conscripts, dealing heavy damage to a retreating one and possibly suppressing the um, alive one. But the conscripts were able to decap the cutoff road in the center, so cutting off a lot of resources for the Germans. That's pretty good. Uh, right now the Soviets do have a bit of a, a resource disadvantage because of their loss of the right side. So any kind of help that they can get is good. Uh, now the Soviet sniper is of course free to fire pretty much at whatever he wants because of the German sniper being dead and also the scout car being dead. So he, he's pretty much got free reign with his own sniper. And pretty much the only thing he has to worry about is, well, getting sniped by Grenadiers, which are almost as dead as snipers sometimes. Uh, again, with the mines, keep getting interrupted. The Soviets now know about them and have Minesweepers, so you should stop planting mines and start upgrading your own Grenadiers with uh, LMGs, which will help out pretty much completely uh, denying the Soviets any kind of issues with their infantry in the later stages of the game, because Vetted Grenadiers with LNGs are pretty much undefeatable for the Soviets. Unless they can use something like Shock Troops over here, we have um, Shock Rifle Frontline Tactics being selected. Uh, of course, this is pretty much the doctrine that always works for the Soviets. So, yeah, this is always a good idea to get Shock Rifle Frontline Tactics. It, well, maybe not always a good idea, but it can always work to get Shock Rifle Frontline Tactics. One spot of Shock Troops is always really good for the anti-infantry. And later on into the game, the S2 is very useful. So the Germans are starting to push back into the left side. We finally have an LMG being operated by number. Uh, this will definitely help them out in the long range department against the sniper even and the uh, conscripts. We have the mine supers pushing up on the right side. They will find two teller mines. So that's again uh, 100 munitions being swept away by 30 munitions. So that's really good trade for the Soviets. Machine gun going to start firing at these conscripts, but uh, the sniper is also able to uh, pick, pick off some of the grenadiers. Of course, we have a pretty good choice actually out of the number. He did go for a second Scott car, uh, which is going to be pretty good as it will pretty much keep at bay the um, sniper and also at, in a bit of a way the shock troops as well. Uh, the Scott car is fairly good against the shock troops as well. Um, now, number should be going for. Um, oh, he's going for a tier 3. Which is interesting. Uh, I, I myself, in his position, would have gone for a tier 4, having had the fuel control on both sides of the map for quite a bit of the game. Um, gone for a tier 4, which because this game is considerably slowing down, so a Panzer Werfer and later on a Panther would have been a uh, not only acceptable, but probably good choice. But we will see what he can do with uh, tier 3. Uh, he's also uh, almost got enough manpower, uh, rather fuel, for an Ostwin, actually, which might be a good idea. Now, an Ostwin is not a unit that I would consider normally, but this sort of situation where the uh, Soviets did spend a lot of resources on tier 1 and uh, shock troops, you know, um, he's going to be lacking in AT, so uh, the Ostwin will be pretty good for him, uh, especially since he's going for a pack. So he definitely knows the importance of getting packs out in the field. So using the pack to support the Ostman, you wouldn't have had uh, much to fear from Soviet armor as well. We have tier 3 being built by Absolute Zero, which is a good choice because he really needs, uh, definitely needs an SC-76 and possibly even a C-70. Uh, the C-70 would be really useful against the Grand Years and also the Scott car. Um, and of course the SC-76 is just an all-around amazing tank. Uh, rather, it's not even a tank, it's more like a vehicle. Um, just an amazing tank destroyer because uh, it's cheap and it's effective, and that's pretty much all you want out of units, uh, especially as the Soviets, who kind of lack that um, vibe of let me get something cheap and effective. It's just kind of let me get something cheap and it's not very effective. Uh, so he's also, he also um, teched into tier 2, which is an excellent choice. Uh, a mistake that a lot of players do, including myself sometimes, is that they go for tier 1. Uh, thinking, well, uh, I need tier 1 in this sort of matchup uh, for that early game advantage. But then they don't back, they don't tech into tier 2. And not teching into tier 2 means that they miss out on the Zis and Sankan, which is an incredibly important unit for the Soviets. 
cannot stress, stress, stress enough how important this is, is to the Soviets. Because you might say, yeah, well, you can substitute it with um, SC-76s because, well, they're pretty much this is this guns on tracks. So, you know, whatever. But see, the thing is, of course, they they cost 80, 75 fuel, and well, uh, you just want to sometimes use your manpower float without having to spend also fuel as well. So right now, the Soviets could be going for a couple of SC-76s. Um, but they're not. Uh, it looks like he's kind of waiting on his resources, which is probably a smart idea considering the Germans are getting a Panzer IV. So you really, he really doesn't know right now what the Germans are taking, um, if they're taking Tier 4 or Tier 3. Because if, if they were taking Tier 4, it would be a bad idea to get SC-76s. But if they were taking Tier 3 and getting Panzer IVs out in the field, it would be a good idea to get um, an SC-76 to support his anti-sand guns. He's going for a second anti-sand gun, uh, which is a pretty much flawless choice because well, you can never have enough anti-tank guns when you have a solid infantry force like this. Uh, the unit preservation out of both players is pretty good. Unfortunately, it looks like right now the uh, shock troops are going into a little bit of a pickle, but they will be able to throw an excellent uh, RGD grenade, uh, dealing heavy damage to these, um, these grenadiers, forcing them to retreat. And honestly, that was really lucky for the grenadiers to actually not die over there, because that grenade was pretty much spot on. Uh, the Panther IV is on the field, and it is being upgraded with a potential mounted machine gun. Excellent choice. Uh, the scout car did notice the anti-tank gun. Um, again, if there had been two anti-tank guns, the scout car would have died instantly. But uh, can bigger scampi cruisers and you know uh, manpower issues are there. Uh, scout sniper up to ten kills. Well, well uh, forcing away this one mortar. Uh, the mortar has been paying for itself, dealing heavy damage to the uh, Soviet infantry. But um, what's been really doing well for the Germans is this MG42 machine gun and the Grenadiers. Now, he went for a 4th Grenadier squad, excellent, excellent choice out of number actually, not one not one I would have made because... Well, look at his um, commanders, they are pretty much all got um, ways to support his own infantry. Uh, we've got two command tank commanders and also the assault support doctrine which will later on have the ability to call in the Tiger and the Strafing Run, and also the Artillery Field Officer if he still chooses, which does have an ability to boost the accuracy of his own Grenadiers. So having a lot of Grenadiers with a lot of LMGs for these um, long-range engagements in this game that's starting to, you know, um, go into the long stages is a good idea, and he will require this um, ability to fight at long range with a lot of infantry units, uh, so it was probably a pretty safe choice to go for um, a 4th Grenadier squad. Now what I will also go and recommend for Nubber is another pack gun, because, well, um, at this point he knows that they're shock troops, and if he has um, if he has looked at the uh, doctrines that the Soviets had, he will know that the only doctrine on the Soviet side that has shock troops is shock rifle frontline, and now that he sees that this um, now he sees the incendiary artillery, he definitely should know that this is shock army, or not, not, not shock army, if he didn't have shock army, it's shock rifle front lines. So he should know that there's an S2 coming in later on into the field. And which is also one, one other reason why I think going for a Panzer IV is, is not the best choice, because it will not be too useful against the S2 later on into the game. So he really needs to make a lot of usage out of this unit as soon as possible, but at the same time, he also wisely knows that uh, there's a lot of anti tank out of the um, out of the Soviets on the field, so you really should be using his Panzer IV on the right side, uh, because when you know that uh, there's anti tank uh, concentrated on one side of the map, but um, there's another side of the map where there's lower intensity engagements, like these one squad against one squad on the right side, you can just send your own tank over there to, as a counter harassment unit. And use that against the uh, just Fenner forces uh, just to keep control of the side without too much effort. Uh, because right now the Soviets aren't sending anything that can counter the Panzer IV on the right side because they don't have anything that can counter the Panzer IV on any kind of offensive uh, way. They have two AT guns, but they are a defensive unit. He uh, absolutely here also goes for a Maxim machine gun. Uh, interesting choice uh, because of um, how many LMG squads that there are for the Germans. The machine gun will likely just be sniped before I can even suppress any of them. But hey, uh, that's just my experience with Maxims. Uh, I find them much more useful against OPW than against um, Wehrmacht. 
Because once they start to, once Wehrmacht starts to get out of um, Grand Years vetted up with LMGs, the thing just dies. The machine gun just dies. The crew, because the crew has a um, received accuracy uh, penalty, received accuracy modifier penalty, so they die faster. Essentially, the soldiers manning the machine gun die faster than, for example, just a random conscript. So a tier 4 being built by Absolute Zero. I'm not sure I completely agree, but a Kachusha right now would be an excellent choice. Um, and funnily enough, a Kachusha would actually justify this Panzer IV, because the Panzer IV is an excellent unit to come down Kachusha. Definitely would not go for T-34 76s or SU-85s right now, because he's only got um, two command points and a quarter uh, left to go for the S-2, so he'd want to be... Conserving as much fuel as possible, but a Katusha, uh, while fuel intensive, is well not that fuel intensive, and also um, is a unit that doesn't really fill any role that the S2 would uh, because of being artillery. We have an excellent rifle grenade being fired at this positive cloud, completely wiping them. So that was a good rifle grenade getting vet free on his first Grand Year squad uh, to you know obtain vet free, which doesn't really make any sense. Um, all of the conscripts of 40 Soviets are actually going on the right side, which is a bit of a mistake. You shouldn't send all of your units that can throw any sand grenades on one side. Excellent usage of the Maxim. Um, gonna reposition to deal with some um, grand years that we're pushing up. Conscripts pushing up on the right side. Um, fairly easily going to be um, able to push up against this grand year squad, but unfortunately, uh, it doesn't look like grand year is being monitored and will retreat into a more advantageous position. At long range, the machine gun is also set up over here to help out in the defense against these conscripts. Ooh, ooh, SU-85. Not really sure about the SU-85 because, well, um, now he knows that um, he doesn't really know what the Germans are going for in terms of doctrines. But I would advise waiting for the S2 heavy tank with his fuel, because he doesn't have the highest fuel reserves, he hasn't been floating exactly a lot of fuel, but I don't know, I'm really not sure about this SU-85, I think it is a terrible de decision, and I think Akashusha would have been excellent for him, but I don't know, I just, it, the SU-85 is just a unit that is an investment into the future, and when there's as little it, just armor to fight as a Panzer IV, the SU-85 cannot vet up nearly as fast enough as it should be vetting up for it to be useful in later on later on into the game. It will be useful once the Tiger hits the field, but he doesn't know that there's a Tiger available. Of course, Number is also uh, floating a lot of manpower, which is bad. He should be going for an extra anti-tank gun, and possibly a Panzer Radio Squad is a good idea, but also possibly a... Um, Artillery field officer might be also a good idea. I'm not sure. Um, artillery field officer is a unit that's kind of hard to use, so I don't really blame them for not going for it. Panzer IV gonna be pushing up against the shock troops again. It's on prioritized vehicles, which is a um, pretty bad decision as there aren't any Soviet vehicles. Uh, it should be allowed to free fire at the um, infantry with its own main gun. Because again, the Panzer IV is an excellent anti-infantry unit with its own main gun. Um, two anti-tank guns are actually going to deal heavy damage to the Panzer IV, possibly destroy it. A fragmentation bomb will actually destroy one of the anti-tank guns fairly easily. SU-85 is on the right side, but it's there's nothing for it to fight. If it was on the left side, it would be actually useful. And it's on focus sight, which means that it's very, very um, slow at doing anything. It's actually being paired up with the sniper, which means that this focus sight is actually really useless because the sniper also has a lot of uh, tools to get vision. So that was a pretty good push for the Germans. They managed to wipe out one of the AT guns and, well, also distracting the S-285 somehow. But the uh, Soviet sniper is actually also dealing a lot of damage um, to the German units on the right side. Uh, a Panzer Grenadier squad being built. Uh, might be useful against it if it can manage to get a good flank. Excellent uh, S minefield in the center. Um, definitely want, wanting to uh, get as many minefields on the field. Um, minefields on the field. Getting as many minefields on the ground as possible. Mostly because of the fact that uh, the minesweeper cannot be everywhere at once. 
So if the minesweeper is on the left side, then um, a unit that is just unaware and walks into this minefield will be wiped. Two 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 Scott car being fairly annoying to these conscripts. So I'll have to eat my own words. He does have the resources for the S2. Anyway, despite the fact that he did go for the SU-85, and the SU-85 is a good pair up with the S2, but the problem is that he really needs fighting units or artillery at this point, and the SU-85 is neither. The SU-85 is going to be useful later against the Tiger, but right now the Tiger, I don't know, it just I think the S2 would be good enough against it, and also he Dubber doesn't really have the population for the Tiger. Which is why perhaps this 5th Grand Year squad is a bit of a mistake, so you'd want to be maybe losing it soon, I don't know, maybe losing the Panzer 4 would be a better idea, I'm not really not sure. So the ES2 is available, and please build it, please build it, build it, okay. When I see people not building that tank, I get my, uh, just, my hair, it just becomes very, very scared, because, like, I don't know, it's just very scary. Uh, so the ES2 is... On the field, we'll be able to pretty much easily deal with any German units that are around, except this pack gun. And the pack gun is on the other side, so. And actually, the pack gun being on the other side is actually fairly wise because of the SU 85 being there, so. While I don't give enough credit to Absolute Zero for coming up with this, the SU 85 on the right side did work out because the pack repositioned to deal with it, uh, even though there was really no need to deal with it. And now the S2 has complete free reign on the left, which is very interesting, and I'm fairly certain it wasn't intentional, but hey, it worked out that way, okay? Let's, keep, let's cut him some slack. Um, so the S2 is pushing up and dealing some heavy damage to the Panzer 4, Panzer 4 not really being able to do much in return. Um, now the S2 is attempting to deal with these Grand Years, and it's going to turn its rear armor to, towards them, which is a bad idea because it's will allow the Panzer Frost to penetrate, but he doesn't... Uh, Decide to not even use the Panzerfaust. Tiger is available. Please, please build it. Because right now the Tiger would be very important, a very important unit for Number uh, to build because he really needs some some heavy armor of his own. The kind of the is two. Right now the uh, Germans have a bit of a uh, advantage in terms of pop cap. They have pretty much a hundred full pop cap compared to uh, seventy. For the Soviets, the shock troops were able to wipe out the Panzer Grenadiers, actually, so that will allow the pop cap to be fairly, um, fairly free. Um, excellent, again, S minefield dealing heavy damage to the uh, shock troops along with the Tiger, gonna be wiping that veteran shock troop squad. Very important wipe. When, right now, the Germans have the complete advantage. So what, what I would do if I was Nubber is, after reinforcing my Grenadiers, um, all over the map, uh, send them back to base, reinforce, and then just gather them up in one area and make a big push with all of your units in one area. Uh, stop spreading out so much uh, because, well, at this point into the game, it's all about concentration of force because, well, um, at this point, you really be. Um, there's two ways to win at this point it's either get a triple cap and win quickly, uh, or just go for a big push to destroy their units and just wipe their units and force them into a surrender because they have no more veteran units. They have no more resources to replace the units they lost. So making a big push on one side is pretty much the way to go if you want to be doing that. And as the Germans at this point, you want to be doing that because, well, you have the units for it. You can easily crush the Soviets right now. Um, but um, it doesn't look like the Tiger will be going in alone, which is a, definitely a mistake. So now he knows that the S-85 is over here. Uh, the SU-85 will turn on focus sight, which means that he will not be able to um, chase the Tiger. Uh, the crew shock on the S-2 from the Tiger shot uh, will be able uh, to um, just stop the S-2 in its tracks, uh, along with some pack, pack gun shots, going to be forcing it away. Very lucky for the S-2 to not actually be penetrated by any of those shots. The S-2 doesn't really have that much armor uh, compared to some other units. Though I do believe the armor is superior to the Tiger. Which it should be, uh, because if it was equal, then I'd be kind of pissed. Uh, we have another shock troop squad being built by Absolute Zero. Absolute Zero is on his last legs right now. He doesn't really have any manpower. He doesn't really have any manpower income. He doesn't really have any engineers to repair his armor. Uh, so if 
a big German push just crashes into his lines on the left. Both of these tanks die. Maybe the S2 lives if it um, if it plays very defensively. Again, you just need a big coordinated push. Also, because in one big coordinated push, it's uh, a bit easier to keep track of your units than if they are spread out throughout the entire map. Actually, right now the SU-85 is taking a lot of damage from the mortar, which is kind of interesting. Mortar up to seven kills and bet two. So engineers were rebuilt by number. Uh, he looks like he did lose his pioneer squad earlier on. He really needs these engineers to repair his tiger. Perhaps even getting a second uh, second pioneer squad would be useful because of um, mine laying. He does have a lot of uh, munitions that he can use, but uh, he's also a salt support doctrine, which means that he's got a couple of airstrikes which, with which he can uh, shave off some of that munitions flow. Grand Years will be pushing up. And on the left side, again, pushing up units um, pretty much piecemeal is not the best choice against an S2 and a SU-85. Because if you... Um, these units have a bit of a weakness. They are very, very uh, focused on firing at a single target at once. Because the S2 has a lot of reload time and the SU-85 is a tank destroyer. So they cannot really deal with a lot, a big swarm coming at them. And what right now the Germans do have is a big swarm of also very dangerous units. So I'm really not sure. I'm really not sure why he was isn't just isn't focusing his units on one side and just crashing into the enemy lines because, as stupid as it sounds, uh, just a very big frontal assault sometimes is just the best way to do it because well I'm. Um, you can just send in one or two units to the flank, perhaps of your infantry, to just take out a few of these support weapons, and that will be enough of a flanking maneuver to just make the entire enemy line collapse on itself, and then allow any kind of frontal assault to have a much bigger chance of success. Again, in case you haven't noticed, what I'm trying to say is, right now if Nubber were to just gather up his stuff and go, he'd probably win. Uh, because the SU-85 is a very very weak unit to flanks so if there's a lot of stuff coming at it from the center and like the Panzer IV gets into this rear it's dead also the Panzer IV is dead because again sending in your units piecemeal very very bad decision um, the Panzer IV was actually actually took an engine damage I think from a mine that was placed over here so excellent excellent usage of mines out of absolute zero number noticing this uh, wind frame minesweeper on his pioneers. Again, sending in one unit at a time. No, 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 no. You have seven units, seven offensive units. You have five um, grenadiers, one pack, and one tiger, which well, should count for three, uh, three units. So you have like pretty much nine offensive units. So you should use all of them at once instead of only one. Um, Tiger's being used very defensively. It's only got two kills. It's been on the field for six minutes. Compare that to the S2, which has 11 kills. It's also being used defensively, but at least it's being used. What, one thing that Number is doing well is harassment of the right side. He's pretty much have had the right side for the entire of the time, which means that he's still got a uh, resource uh, advantage over the Soviets and also a VP advantage over the Soviets. He's pretty much got all the VPs. Now, something that he could do is uh, keep playing defensively and just risk this S2 becoming very uh, just powerful with veterancy and then risk the enemy getting Kachusha and focusing down all the infantry squads of accurate barrages and just going for the VP victory, the slow type of VP victory, because there's two VP, VP victories. There's a quick one, with, ah, quick one with triple cap, and the slow one with having two VPs. Uh, now, with the Germans, usually it's pretty easy to go for a slow VP victory because of well, um, superior support weapons and superior late game infantry at long range engagements. But the reason it is risky to go for this type of victory is that. Well, of course, as I said, the enemy could be going for a Kachusha at any time, and that would 
uh, pretty much counter that style of play completely. So we will see what, what ends up happening for number. Sniper's still on the field, uh, up to 28 kills, almost that free. So it's been paying, if, paying for itself fairly decently, I'd say. Um, at the same time, the shock troops are um, available to do some harassment on the right side, but the grenadiers are uh, going to be re repulsing them fairly easily. I gotta speed it up because there's just a, a lot of nothing going on. Tiger again going alone. Why? And all of the units, all of the units, pretty pretty much spread out over a whole map, uh, which is again, it's good in the early game. It's good for capping. It's good for harassment, but later on to the game, you'd want to be sending in one or two units to harass, per just preferably engineers, just not units that are good in combat, because you'd want to be focusing all of your units in one area to just defeat the enemy in this important area. Because again, um, it's the old, just, what is better, five fingers or one fist? Uh, just, you know... Uh, if your unit, if your enemy has all of their important units on one side of the map, also this is a terrible idea because this uh, shot, this watchtower goes down fairly easily to tank shots. Watchtower goes down fairly easily to any shot, and actually even the rifle fire will take it down. Was very lucky actually that the S2 shot then wipe the Ranger spot altogether. Kind of ridiculous, honestly, that a 122 millimeter round doesn't destroy the wood, the wooden watchtower nor kill any of the men in it, which is uh, just, you know, some of the things that Company of Heroes is just excellent for. Excellent grenade out of the shock troops. Again, this is why you'd want to be focusing your unit on you know, some one area, because then you don't know what's happening on the other side because you cannot micro on two sides of the map at once. Rather, three sides of the map, even, because he's just, he's got units everywhere, which is good if you can manage them. But then, again, stuff like this happens and your units get wiped. Ooh, excellent, excellent users of the pack gun. Gonna be dealing heavy damage to the um, already damaged SU-85. SU-85 up to vet 2, so now it's a very dangerous unit. Again, the only reason it's been able to vet up is because the units of number have been coming at a piecemeal and it's been able to focus them down one by one. Normally, if a lot of units were to charge at the SU-85, it wouldn't be able to just defeat them all. So right now Number has lost two of his veteran um, Grand Years of LMGs, just bringing the infantry fight a little bit e more even because we have two shock troops and two um, vetted conscripts along with the sniper for the Soviets. So it's a fairly even fight now. Um, of course uh, it's a fairly even fight if the Soviets can close the distance, but uh, the Soviets cannot close the distance if Number plays correctly. Um, good usage of the uh, engineers capping the right side. Again, sending too many units to the right side. You've had the control of the right side for the entirety of the time. One Grenadier uh, would be enough to defeat one shock troop that's capping, because if a shock troop is capping, then it cannot charge at you into close range. Okay, now you've pretty much defeated this one shock troop that was coming in to harass you. Now after you've defeated that squad and sent them, sent them packing in, into the base, you send your grenadiers back into the left side and push along with your tiger. Combined arms, combined arms, just focusing on one point. Heavy damage onto these um, pioneers by the uh, S2 again. Sending in the pioneers alone. Why? Why would you send in the pioneers alone? Okay, then no. Then you know that the AT gun is over here. Then why do you send the tiger up at the AT gun from the front flank? The tiger is a fast vehicle for its weight and for its just power. It's a very fast vehicle, so you, you could just run around flank, wipe the AT gun crew, and then destroy both of the AT guns um, with attack move. So right now the S2 is pushing up and there's pretty much nothing to defeat it. The pack is over here and we have a panther on the field. So again, we have another choice. Uh, choice. We have another chance for the Germans to make a big combined, coordinated, whatever word you want to use for it, push with heavy units. We'll see if they can take uh, a little bit, um, 
take this chance and stick with it. Uh, so the engineers are in a bit of a pickle. The Tiger will be damaged engine, and we have a cis gun and an SU-85 able to push up and fire at it, but they're not doing it. So it looks like the Soviets are also making the same mistake of advancing with only one unit. We also have a T-34-76 who is totally able to easily run over these uh, Grenadiers, but they are, being, they, they are being monitored and they will retreat. Retreating, of course, makes them vulnerable to crushing. The Panther will be sent in to counter the T-34-76, which is an excellent choice because the Panther does pretty much counter the T-34-76 just as fast and also uh, pretty much invulnerable to its rounds. So, um, the Germans lost their uh, one machine gun, Vet-3 machine gun, in this engagement, which is a bit of a bad uh, loss. Uh, and they barely uh, survived their own Tiger. Again, this is because their units were spread out. Just too spread out. Uh, the Tiger, along with the Engineers, was on one island over here. And the MG uh, was on one island over here, along with the Mortar and the Panther that was newly built. And the Grandiers were on one island over here. These units are meant to stick together. They're meant to be one big force. So they can support each other. Going... Just sending in your units by branch, uh, let's, just, let's just call it that, by branch. So all of your mainline infantry to one spot, then all of your support weapons to one spot, then all of your heavy tanks to one spot, that doesn't work. You want to be sending everything to one spot, and then sending a few supportive harassment type units to the other side of the map to harass. So the SU, again, sending in units piecemeal. The Tiger isn't fully repaired, so the Panther shouldn't be advancing this far at all. And it pays for it. it also um, shouldn't be stopping over here excellent crew shock out of the Tiger uh, with a regular round the pack 40 also has the target point targeted on the S2 so fairly long crew shock for the Tiger uh, the S2 the Tiger is repaired of the, the, the engine but it will be crew shock so it will not be able to chase this S2 which is in a very bad spot again the Soviets making the same mistake, sending in their units piecemeal. They sent in the S2 without uh, the um, infantry being ready to assist, because one squad was out capping and the other squads were out reinforcing, and the second um, shock troop squad was the only squad around, and along with the sniper squad, which is up to 38 kills. Again, 38 kills on a sniper wouldn't happen if the Germans were playing a little bit more aggressively and sending in all their units at once. Of course, at this moment, if the Germans do send in all their units at once, I don't think they can win anymore, because right now the Soviets have had the time to build up a force, and they also have a reserve of uh, reserve of fuel and manpower, which means that even if they lose a few units, they can probably replenish them. Again, in, in the game, it's just as important to have a resource uh, reserve, just in case you... Um, you lose your stuff unexpectedly, so you can replace it, as having units on the field. So once you start to get uh, close to the um, you know end of the end of your pop cap, just not losing units um, becomes a exercise of well now I'm gonna have a reserve. So in case I do lose units in an engagement I that could not be helped, I can re replace them, and that will allow you to win in these sort of attritional fights. And this is what right now the Soviets are building up for. Uh, the Germans do, don't really have a, a big manpower reserve, but they also have a pretty big fuel reserve, so it's really not much of a problem. And finally, Nubber uh, decides that, well, I should probably focus my units on one side, and also I should, um, you know, I've headbutted on the left side enough. This is also another important concept that a lot of players forget in the late game. If you headbutt much into one area, and you lose over and over, you can probably just switch to another area and attack from another side. Of course, right now, Nubber has made pretty much zero offensive maneuver, like big offensive maneuvers at all. Uh, it's pretty weird. Like, he's got the units for big offensives, but he's not making them, which just means that when the Soviets uh, repulse the piecemeal units fairly easily, then they can make their own offensives. And have been a little bit better at it than the Germans. The SU-85 is a bit too and us you know, vet 2 and 90%, now vet 3, so it will be very dangerous to the panther and, even, and to the tiger, even to the panther, which is uh, usually pretty much a counter to tank destroyers because of its speed and armor. Um, the S2 is up to vet 2 with 23 kills, and it's a very dangerous unit, 
and right now the Soviets have had the time to uh, actually triple cap the Germans a while and bring them down to half of the VPs. Uh, the T-3476 is in a very good position to repulse these um, Grenadiers. Going to be attempting to run them over. The Grenadiers do manage to retreat just in time. And a thing about the T-3476, which makes it an excellent purchase for Absolute Zero, despite the fact that, honestly, a Kishisha would be better, um, would be even better, let's just say, um, the T-34 is also an excellent purchase because, well, once you get reaches Ven-1, you will have Secure Mode unlocked, which means that the T-34 will eff effectively become a counter-harassment unit worthy of anything the Germans can have right now, because he will just be able to roll in, defeat whatever unit is there and then capture the point as if it was an infantry unit. And this is while maintaining its excellent speed of being a T-3476. Now the shock troops right now should really be retreating. Okay, they are retreating. The S-85 excellently pushing up, dealing heavy heavy damage to the um, Panther. We have a second pack gun being built by uh, Number, which is probably a good idea. Um, it is able to uh, bring some fire down on this S2, which is pushing up a little bit too far with no infantry support. Again, the Soviets are making the same mistakes sometimes, but the difference here is at this point they have an S2 that's veteran, whereas the German Tiger only is veteran 1, which uh, means that he only got the Blitzkrieg veteran ability, which again is only useful if you make a big offensive push where the Blitzkrieg can be useful to outflank AT guns and the SU 85 and close the distance with the S2. It's really not too useful of an ability when you're just sitting. Um, whereas the Soviets, the units that they have are paradoxically more fit for a defensive attritional um, type of warfare, whereas normally the German units would be better for this. And the reason the Soviets have a better composition for this is because of the S2 being a fairly good unit um, for long range engagements. Uh, and also the S-85 being uh, at vet free, pretty much the best tank destroyer in the game, uh, even better than the Jackson. Even better than the Jackson, even better than um, no, actually the Yak Panzer IV at vet five is the best tank destroyer in the game. But you know, second best tank destroyer in the game because well, it's got excellent range, excellent, um, pretty much ability to spot for itself with its focus sight, and also the insane fire rate and insane penetration. So he will be able to easily outrange the German units because the German units right now are pushing units. They are just, uh, the Panther and the Tiger are just units that want to be moving forward, moving forward flanking, dealing heavy damage to units that aren't, um, they are caught off guard just doing that. Um, whereas the, you know, S-85 is a unit that's stationary, it's defensive, it wants to be sitting back, it wants to be pecking away at these units, um, wants to have time, pretty much. And another thing that um, the Absolute Zero is starting to do is placing demo charges on the map. Um, he does know that the demo charges is there, thanks to his engineers though, so he will be able to easily attack and move it. So the Soviets are making, again, uh, right now the Soviets are making a push on the right side and the Grand Years are going down. What it, what is the number paying attention to? I don't know. Um, we have another push in the center. Okay, the, so the Soviets are making the same mistake also. Um, we're sending in their units by branch. They have their shock troops over here. They're going to be suppressed by the MG. They have their conscripts over here. And they have their tanks sitting, up, sitting, sitting back for no real reason. But it looks like he will be able to at least uh, force these um, Grandiers to retreat tanks to this incendiary artillery barrage. But the Tiger will easily be able to defeat these conscripts. Again, if the Tiger right now were to be flanked by the um, Soviet tanks, if the Soviet tanks were, make, were to make a push over here, they would be able to easily flank the Tiger and possibly destroy it. But the Soviet tanks will make a big push on the left side, and where there's all of the German AT, which is possibly not the best idea. Uh, though it looks like one of the packs was sent in to the right side. So right now the, the other pack was actually uh, mispositioned over here, and it will be destroyed by the Soviet units. Um, the Soviets will also be able to destroy this um, machine gun. The Panther is attempting to make a counter push against these tanks, but the Su-85 will easily be able to destroy it if it's actually turning around. Okay, finally we'll turn around. The S-2 is in a bit of a um, pickle with its HP being shaved off. Uh, the T-3476 up to Vet-1, gonna be able to easily uh, defeat these uh, German support weapons. 
And right now the Soviet infantry is reinforcing at the base. Uh, the shock troops are being sent to the right side. Now this is a probably a pretty good idea because the Tiger will be sent to the left side to uh, counter the Soviet armor push. So you'd want to be sending the shock troops to the right side. Right now the Soviets are really lacking in harassment also. Um, if Absolute Zero was sending one of these engineers to cap this uh, fuel point, there would be nothing the Germans could do to stop it. So he could snatch quite a few resource points. Quite a few resource points without really any effort at all, which is um, what you want to be doing all the time, of course, because, well, putting in effort is hard. Um, Grandiers were able to um, destroy the demo charge. I'm pretty sure it was actually the engineers earlier, but the Grandiers will not be able to withstand the fire of the S2 and the 23476. Again, where is the tiger? It's up here not doing anything. Okay. So, let me explain why it's actually just such a terrible idea to do this. Right now, how much resources do the Soviets have in the fight? They have two, around at least 2,000 manpower of units in the fight. Actually, no, 2,600 manpower of units in the fight. Let me count correctly. So, they have 300, uh, 640, 390. Um, so, uh, that's... Uh, so, this is about... 1,200 manpower plus uh, the engineers, so that's like 340. Uh, so that's 1,500, 1,600 manpower. Then the sniper, 1,000, 2,000 manpower. Then the shock troops, which were flanking. So 2,000. Uh, that's shock troops are 390. So that's 2,780 manpower in the fight. How much manpower did Number have in the fight? He had, well, three Grandier squads, so that's uh, 480, 620, 720? Yep, 720 manpower in the fight. And then you had the Panther, so that was uh, 490 manpower? Oh, fucking hell. Uh, oh, I cannot click on him. That's very unfortunate. Uh, yeah, it's 490 manpower, let's uh, call it that. Um, so. That's like a thousand one hundred manpower, and then a pack gun. So that's a thousand four hundred, a thousand four hundred and sixty manpower or something. So the Soviets have like double the manpower of your units in this one fight. Whereas, as in, in terms of fuel, they have an even bigger superiority because the Panther is one hundred seventy-five fuel. Is it? No. Yeah, it's I believe one hundred seventy-five fuel. And the Soviets have what one hundred thirty. 230, so 360, and um, that's 440 fuel. So more than a double, more than a double uh, of fuel superiority in the fight. So you can see why you're losing these fights because the Soviets have their entire army there, and in terms of resources there, they just simply out resource you where it matters, and then you you know lose despite the fact that your force in general actually costs more than the Soviet force. So if you get more resources in the fight, you have a pretty good chance to win, unless you make a pretty big tactical mistake. So what we what you would want to be doing is concentrating your forces on one side so that you can make usage of the resources that you spent. It's, I really cannot spell it out in a more clear uh, way. Because um, what, num what number uh, wrote in the... Um, Fred of culture.org that he uploaded the replay in was that he thought he played too defensively. No, you didn't play too defensively, you played too spread out. Because playing defensively is okay. He, I do think you played too defensively, but that's not the reason you lost. The reason you lost is because you were sending in your unit, piece, your unit piecemeal and the Soviets were simply out concentrating you. Which, funnily enough, is what happened in the real war as well. Which is, uh, you know, a bit of a nice trivia. Because Company Fear as well being a game about ostensibly about tactics, eh, because of course it being a very um, tactically oriented game in its engagement. After all, it's a, it's a strategy game. It's all about resources. Generally, who has more stuff on the field wins. 
and one of the ways you get stuff is, well, you fight better tactically and you kill their stuff. But then another way to, you know, fall behind is just not using your stuff, like the Steiger. It's not being used. 23 kills, okay, like, it got 23 kills by sitting around. Uh, just think about how many kills it would have gotten had it just been used proactively. Like, this S2 is up to 39, and the S2 is not as good of a killer in general as the Tiger. The S2 is better at defense, um, is better defensively, it's got better armor, better HP, but the Tiger has a better, um, better weapon and also better speed. So that means that it can get to the stuff that it wants to kill faster. Again, now there's really much, uh, there's really nothing the Germans can do uh, because the Soviets have the complete victory point advantage, and they are just bit by bit pushing back, edging away the German units with their pretty much superior units in the counter. Um, now there's also Kshusha, which is pretty much a unit that will that should have been on the field sooner, uh, but it wasn't. Uh, which is a bit of a mistake from Absolute Zero. So I've pretty much talked very extensively about what these players did that was correct or not. Um, other than that, really, uh, not much. Not much else to say. Kishusha will be um, doing some pretty decent damage to the German units. And again, good usage of smoke from the mortar, actually. This is something that you're doing well. Um, bet free mortar, using smoke to push up against the DPs, but uh, Istu can just walk up and use attack round against the units that are capping, so yeah. Also, another reason to just attack. Um, it was a really good game, okay? I'll give both of these players that. It was a good game. Both players played. Pretty much to the best of their best of their abilities. I'm guessing they are newer type of players, but they definitely knew what to build, which means that they were probably just mid level. Um, so that was an enjoyable game. I hope you all enjoyed it. It was very long. And my throat does not like long games, but uh, my eyes do, and I hope your eyes do as well. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something, and I see you soon.